Hi, welcome to Quilting with Lori. My name is Lori Dickman. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today I want to share with you a New Year's nine patch block that I had started up on New Year's Day and I want to continue it. I've got some more ideas on how to put this quilt together. Um, I actually taught this class it was a, one of my scrappy blocks, week number 17. All these um, PDFs will be attached, but that was uh, week number 17 and how you put together the block itself. That same PDF also had an idea for a quilt. So I attached that as well. It was page two of the PDF. And it just will give you an, a quilt idea. It is set on point, and then we're using the nine patch, the tiny one and a half inch nine patch as the um, border all the way around as well. Now, I went ahead and was working on my quilt. You saw some of it live last week. So I have nine of the New Year's nine patch squares finished, and I put them together with blue sashing, and I've got it set on point on this design wall. You do see another quilt behind here. It's just kind of laying up against the wall here. And in the corner, you'll notice that I have a cream colored uh, corner square which I am going to cut out for all four uh, corners of this particular block and I have put together some fun applique pieces. Let me show you some of that. So the applique is called Antique Flower Scroll. It is from my EQ8 and this will be attached um, as a PDF for you. One thing to remember with regard to applique, whenever I pull these down from EQ8, EQ8 automatically includes a quarter inch seam allowance. So if you're a needle turn applicator, you already have the quarter inch seam allowance in that PDF. But if you're going to be using fusible web, paper-backed fusible web, which is what I'm using, just ignore the quarter inch seam allowance and just to pay attention to the heavy dark lines. That they're gonna be your tracing lines and then ultimately your cutting lines. So here is a close-up. I've brought my camera right up to this. And this is simply just hanging here on my design wall. And this is just one corner, but this is the applique. It's a very whimsical applique. There's not a whole lot to it. I didn't want it to overpower the quilt itself. And I'm going to have fun with doing a lot of um, echo quilting and free motion feathers and so forth in this area on all four corners. These applique pieces are felted wool. I made them myself. I love to go to the Goodwill and grab 100% wool sweaters, bring them home and felt them up and then I cut them into charm squares and I love to use them for applique purposes so that's what I have done here. In fact I'll have a few kits available if you're interested in using exactly what I have used um, for this purpose. But you'll see that I've got them all placed on here. I did use some uh, fusible paperbacked for this um, applique technique. I also used a little bit of uh, glue just a touch of the Roxanne's glue based to put some of these outer purple ones on here. And I'm going to take us to the tabletop now and show you how I cut and prepared my um, big corner squares here as well as the applique. Before I go to the tabletop, I think I'm going to share with you how I cut the fabric for the corners uh, using uh, the quilt up here on the design wall here. Um, basically, what I did first of all is measure the length of each of these side units here. And from here to here, it was 40 inches. From here to here, 40 inches. So basically from here all the way to this end, 40 inches. So um, I wanted to cut a large square of fabric that was 40 inches by 40 inches square. I folded that in half diagonally. I folded it in half again diagonally to obtain the corners, the four corner units. Let me grab that and show it to you. So here is the square. It's 40 inches square. And I simply, you can see the cross lines there where I literally folded it in on the diagonal once and then twice. And it's kind of hard to do that with, without the table in front of me but here it's folded once on the diagonal, and then it is folded and pressed twice on the diagonal. Here we go. And I have exactly what I need for each of the four corners. There are four units here. Now, the thing you have to remember is that 
all of these areas that I'm going to be cutting here are going to be on the bias. This outside four edges, they are on the straight of grain, which is wonderful. But these areas are now going to be on the bias and they are going to end up being on the outside corners of our quilt. So we must secure that. So now I'm going to take you to the tabletop and show you. I, I'm using a garment technique to actually ensure that there's no stretching involved. So let me show you that. All right, so I have it up on the tabletop and I have it completely folded for you. And again, what I did is I cut, here is half of this 40 by 40 inch square. And 40 by 40 is what I cut because it was the length of the outer four edges of my quilt. Yours might be different than mine. You just have to measure the outer four edges of your quilt. And um, you should make sure that they're all the same because you want it to be squared. So then what I did is I uh, folded it in half on the diagonal once, pressed a nice sharp crease in it, folded it in half on the diagonal again, pressed a nice sharp crease in it. And then what I did is I took it to my sewing machine and I literally did a stay stitch. And a stay stitch is sewing, I sewed a quarter of an inch on both sides of those creases all the way along um, this entire section, which will give strength to that bias because I'm gonna be cutting on that folded line to separate these four corner sections. So I have four corner sections that are all the same size, but it's going to be nice and strong because I have done a stay stitch there. And here is what a stay stitch looks like. Let me bring this close. Hopefully you can see that. That's the underside. Let me show you the outside. I think you can probably see it better on the underside, but there I've got two lines of stitching on each side, a less than a quarter of an inch, probably three sixteenths of an inch away from that fold. And then what I will do is cut these apart on that fold so that I have my four uh, corner sections. Let me do that for you. So I'm trying to get as much light down here as I can. Hopefully you're able to see this. Um, but for me, I have flipped it so that the underside is facing me because I can see the fold line better here. And I am going to simply cut right on that fold line, which is between the two lines of stay stitching. So as you can see, there we go. And I'm going to bring this down a little bit. I can only do a little section of this at a time. So I've got a quarter of an inch or less than a quarter of an inch stay stitching on that side and also on this side. It's still fragile. You don't want to um, pull on that. In fact, I'll probably starch this just to give it some more durability as I'm sewing it. But these edges here are going to be the outer outside of the quilt now. So I want to make sure that um, there's as little stretch as possible. So that was the purpose of the stay stitching. And it didn't take long at all to do. I just keep bringing this down here. Hopefully I'm keeping it in your line of view so that you can see what I'm doing. Oops, I missed it right there oh, and I missed it there. All right, almost at the end here. All right, so here is one part that's been cut. Now I've got to cut on this line and then I will have two corners from this half and I'll do the same from this one. I will cut along that fold line here and I'll have the other two corners. I'll go ahead and do that 
and then we're going to um, study this piece right here so you can see how I did the applique. So here is my applique. It's a very whimsical antique scroll, flower scroll. Uh, not a whole lot to it, and I don't mind that you could actually make this a whole lot more um, applique intense, if you will. But like I said, I make my uh, felted wool by uh, purchasing wool sweaters at the Goodwill, and I bring them home, and I a wash and dry them in very hot water, hot dryer, and shrink them up so they're felted. And then I just cut them into five inch charm squares so that I can use them for a variety of applique projects. So it's fun to have those. And I do have the required number of pieces to do what I have done here on all four corners in these little kits. And I have enough for five of these kits, so I'll have these available There'll be $8 for this whole kit out on my site, plus the shipping. So if you're interested, check that out in my shop, and there's links below for that. But I simply um, used a fusible paper-backed interfacing. And like I mentioned earlier, let me show you the, the applique pieces um, do have the needle turn seam allowances if you choose to uh, do a needle turn applique, but I'm going to do a few, um, fusible and I'm going to use my sewing machine to applique these down. And as you can see, I just traced the images from those applique sheets, as many as I needed, onto these squares here. And um, then I will cut them out. I fused the, I traced them, then I fused them on the back of the squares, and then I've been cutting them out and applying them to my corner unit here. So lots, those are all the squares that I've used and this is what I have put together. And uh, very simple to do. I did uh, press a crease in the center here so I kind of had an idea, a guideline, so that I was laying things out um, on the each side uh, as, as close as possible. And you could certainly be a whole lot more fussy about it if you choose. You could uh, cr crease in even more of those. But that's what I did. I have them uh, fused with an iron, but I also used my Roxanne's glue base. And I typically, um, when I'm using the wool, I actually uh, put some of that on the back of it as well. Because the wool tends to be a little bit thick, especially these blue and the purple units. They're quite thick and the fuse doesn't adhere as easily. So just adding a little touch of glue, not much, just some little drops, helps to keep things where you want them so that you can get it to the machine and actually get your applique done. All right, so I've done a little bit of the applique. So far I have secured the little lavender circles in and I've circled them twice, kind of given an, a, a whimsical um, applique, if you will. And now I'm working on these pink petals here. And I have my machine set up for free motion quilting. It just makes it so much easier as you go around these petals. So that is what I am doing. I've got everything set up for free motion. And I'm simply um, edge stitching. I am putting in thread colors that match each element that I am using. And in the case of this, I've got some pink applique thread, embroidery thread, I should say. All right, so I have those three petals done. I'm gonna, and I guess those three petals are finished. Now I can put in my teal thread and put these teal um, leaves and stems on. I'll change my thread, I'll be right back. So now I've got my teal thread in and I'm going to start working on these little teal leaves. Again, I'm just simply doing a, an edge stitch.
free motion edge stitch. So there's one leaf. Now we're going to head down. Do another one. I'll just do a couple of these so that you can see how I'm doing it in case you've never done free motion applique. So I have two of them in. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. Um, each uh, element that I'm appliquing will have a matching thread. I've decided I want to have every one of my um, elements have matching threads. So I have all of these different threads here that I will be putting on from the blue, purple, orange, brown, the pink, the teal, etc., and the dark red. So we'll be doing that here in just a minute and uh, getting it all on. As soon as I'm done with this, I'll bring it to the tabletop so you can get a close-up and see that. I do just want to mention real quick, um, many people who do wool applique prefer to hand embroider these down or hand applique, and that is a beautiful way to do it. If you had the time to do that, absolutely. Um, there's some beautiful wool threads that you could use to applique your wool, um, applique pieces down to your uh, quilt, and I would recommend that highly. I just don't have the time or the patience to, to do that. I feel that I, I need to get this accomplished because I have so many other projects that I need to get working on for you. So I am using the applique embroidery thread uh, for mine. I'm doing it on the machine. I'm using free motion, but absolutely when you're working with wool, that beautiful blanket st stitch with wool thread is gorgeous. So if you have it, obviously go ahead and use that. So here is the completed New Year nine patch quilt, which I just finished late last night. I just completed all of the borders and got them all on last night. But it is a nine of the New Year blocks, and that was the scrappy block week number 17, and I will um, include in the description box below the video tutorial as well as the PDF for that, so you'll know how to do that. I did nine of those blocks, set them on point, and then I created the corners, did the applique, and then I continued making additional uh, nine patch units for the border. And I'll have this PDF for the block attached. And my goal for this quilt was to try to use up uh, some of this one and a half inch scraps. My container is quite the mess, but I have used about half of the container in this quilt. There are over 1,300 squares. I did a count of everything that I did in the center and all of the borders. I have used over 1,300, so I used quite a few. I still have quite a few left so I can continue to make more quilts with my one and a half inch squares. I'll include some additional pictures so that you can see all of the borders. It's kind of hard to see the whole quilt hanging here. It turned out beautifully. I really like it. I really enjoyed making it and I hope that you did too. I'll have links below for the, um, uh, the felt. I have a few of the kits available for the felt, which is what I used for the, uh, the wool felt for the corners. I will attach the PDF in the description box below for this antique flower scroll applique pieces. So you'll have what you need there. I did make some additional pieces for my own purposes. Feel free to do whatever you want with it. Have fun. You'll notice I've added a little burgundy piece here. I added some additional units here. You could do a whole lot more. You could have, just have fun with it. I didn't want to add too much because like I said earlier in this video, I want to do a lot of uh, long arm quilting in that, uh, those corners. I want to do a lot of echo quilting. So I'm excited to get it up in the long arm and start having fun with it. But um, enjoy that, that will be attached, that PDF link will be attached, the PDF for the block itself. And um, when I did the uh, borders here, I simply did additional nine patches and uh, just made sure that the nine patches matched the length of each of the borders. And I put blue three and a half inch squares 
any, or I cut three and a half inch blue squares for each of the four corner squares. And then the borders are simply one and a half inch borders is all they are. So it was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll try it. And I would love to see quilts from you. Please don't forget to post things that you're working on on my uh, Facebook page. It's Quilting with Lori and it's my Scrap Up Your Stash group page. So please go out there, join that group and post things that you're working on. I'd love to see things that other quilters are working on every each and every day and every week. I do have more scrappy patterns coming up. On Monday I'll have another scrappy block for you. My goal is to really use up those scraps. We all have scraps and if you haven't watched my lecture yet on speedy solutions to cut, sort, and organize your scrap stash so that you can actually use your scraps, please don't forget to do that. I'll link a video clip below so that you can find that easily and make sure you watch that. It will really help you with your scrap stash to get things organized and ready to go. Tomorrow I'm having a free Zoom class at 11 a.m. Central Town. That's Chicago time. And we're going to be working with our two and a half inch strips, our jelly roll strips. We're, we're, strips. we're going to be doing this a log cabin on point and when you register for this zoom class you can go out to my website quiltingwithlori.com go to the shops page and then go down to courses and you'll find this course you'll find other courses there too but this is for tomorrow as soon as you register for it it's free um, you'll see a page that comes up with your zoom link and the pdf make sure you download all of that right away and uh, we'll see you then tomorrow at 11, and I'll see you again on Monday with more scrappy blocks for you. And if you like the content that I provide to you, please don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. And please share my videos with your friends, with other quilters, with your quilt guild. Make sure that your guild uh, president or chair people know about it so that they can share it with their entire guilds. So I just want to thank you so much for stopping by my channel and learning how to use up your scrap stash. And please stay tuned for more great uh, scrappy quilt patterns that I'm going to be sharing with you over the next couple of months. I've got my block of the month coming up as well. And I will see you tomorrow, if not tomorrow, on Monday. Have a great weekend. Happy quilting.